All right, Election Day is less than six weeks away, and later today, Vice President Harris is expected to finally roll out more economic details while courting voters in rural Pennsylvania. But that may be overshadowed. Overshadowed following her call to eliminate the filibuster? Senior White House correspondent Peter Ducey is live at the White House with the latest for us. Hey, Peter. And we can report, for once, this is actually not a big Harris flip-flop this cycle. She has had that position about the filibuster since 2022, but it is the thing that she is choosing to make issue one in a rare media appearance, that she would blow up Senate rules to bring back the abortion access guaranteed by Roe. I've been very clear. I think we should eliminate the filibuster for Roe and get us to the point where we 51 votes would be what we need to actually put back in law the protections for reproductive freedom and for the ability of every person and every woman to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. The retiring Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, whose influence always came from never being a sure yes vote for his party's plans, says now that Harris wanting to blow up the filibuster means she has blown her shot at his vote. I think I've been very clear in my whole career is that the, that the 60 vote threshold that we uh, that we basically operate under in the Senate is is is, extent, is, is essential. Would, Would you, you endorse her for president then? I'm not yeah. endorsing. I'm no. not endorsing. And then we've got this photo, Tim Walls. I believe we have the photo. Tim Walls, who is hoping to be the next generation of Democratic leader, is meeting with the next generation of Democratic donor, Alex Soros. His father, of course, has funneled hundreds of millions of dollars to Democratic and liberal causes over the last couple decades. George Soros, back to you. There you go. Hey, Peter, um, as it, you know, so many people have said, and there's a picture of Mr. Soros, screen right, and Mr. Walls, screen left. Are they Man, socially distancing? Not nice they apartment. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Peter, uh, breaking news. Uh, turns out after dodging interviews, uh, Kamala Harris is going to sit down for a live interview at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, over on MSNBC, oh. the same day that Joe Biden sits down in front of The View, live on ABC. Yeah, and that's kind of a bummer for Joe Biden. He's going to have a studio audience and everything, but uh, the shelf life of whatever he says is going to be really limited because Kamala Harris has not done a one-on-one -on -one network TV interview until this evening. And so uh, when we talk tomorrow morning, we should have many clips. Many highlights. Right. Yeah. All right, Thanks, Peter. Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. So much, well, Peter. well, once again, we've seen uh, the real Kamala Harris only when she's talking about abortion. Changed her energy policy, changed her policy on the border, changed her policy when it comes to economy. Fracking. Whenever fracking, she changes it all the time. But again, for the filibuster, she's remaining consistent because she's talking about abortion. That's right. the only time she can speak off the cuff and have a policy position. Doesn't change uh, how she feels and. That one issue. Well, and it shows that uh, she believes that the Democrats are going to hold the Senate. I, I saw a preview. Uh, there's something on Drudge right now that says the predict. Uh, a current prediction is that the Democrats are going to win, going to win the House, but the Republicans are going to win the Senate. So that would throw a, a wrench into her work. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.